The Orient Kama Sutra is so beautiful. I had no idea. <laughs> the Orient Kamasu comes in a tiny little no-nonsense cardboard box, which I appreciate because it takes little space. And when I resell it on eBay, it will not cost the buyer a lot to ship. The box comes with a one-year warranty booklet. Also, it comes with a manual on how to wind your Kamasu. I'm late to get this review out on the Orient Kamasu because there was a shortage of burgundy dial Kamasus last year and one could only get them on the gray market. Since I like to avoid the gray market, I waited until Orient finally restocked their burgundy dials and bought one directly from them for $280. I am an independent watch journalist. The Kamasu was paid for by me, and I received no payments nor gifts in exchange for this review. The Kamasu reminds me of the Boeing 737 MAX airplane, as it appears to be a disaster of retrofitting. The crown is way, way too small to operate normally. I will talk more about this god-awful crown later. By modern standards, the Kamasu has a small leaning, average sized case at about 41.5 millimeters. As you can see, the 22 millimeter bracelet width looks cartoonishly big for the case. The bracelet width should have been 20 millimeters. To add insult to injury, the oversized bracelet only tapers 2 millimeters and goes back up to 22 millimeters at the clasp. Making the bracelet even more bulky, Orient used an overly long clasp. The effective length of this clasp on your wrist is 54 millimeters. That's over 2 inches of rigid metal on the back of your wrist. Compare this to the Seiko 5 Sports at 49.5 millimeters. Or the Long Island Watch Islander ISL02 at 48.5 millimeters. The bracelet is a deal breaker for me. When I get to the dial, you'll see that skilled watchmakers designed it, which leads me to believe that Orient knows full well that the bracelet and clasp are a kludge. They went ahead and sold it anyway. The Kamasu shouldn't feel so uncomfortable. The watch isn't that big. The lug to lug is only 46 millimeters and the downward sloping lugs help the watch conform to the wrist. In addition, the bracelet links are wicked smooth and very flexible. Also, the overall design of the clasp is nearly perfect. There's no sharp gap at the edges of the clasp, and there's plenty of room for you to dig your finger in to open it up. It snaps in and out perfectly. Orient even nicely pressed their logo into the metal. The crown's stem is fairly thick. The crown itself has a sick amount of wobble. Could Kamasu owners please write in the comments whether or not their crown wobbles like mine so I can get an idea as to how normal this is for this watch. The crown itself is small, but it's way, way too big to reasonably fit between the narrow passage of the crown guards, which almost completely enclose the crown when it's fully screwed in. What were the folks at the back office thinking when they devised this kludge? As a person with big hands and relatively thick fingers, it's a fair challenge for me to screw this crown back in. It often takes me more than one try, and when I get it in, I'm never fully convinced that I've screwed it in all the way, because I can barely feel the crown as there's too much crown guard in the way. I can only imagine an animal with nimble, slender fingers, like a capuchin monkey, being able to comfortably operate this watch's crown. This crown was not made for human beings. The crown pop is good. The action is not terrific due to the crown's wobble. The crown is really, really lightly signed. Orient was just sort of going through the motions here. The crown and crown guards are a deal breaker for me. 
No one should have to put up with this nonsense in a $280 watch, even if it has a sapphire crystal. Some other reviewers have described the radial sunburst dial like their Jodie Foster in the movie Contact when she's so awed by the beauty of an alien galaxy that she's moved to tears. I acknowledge that the sunburst dial might look beautiful to some people, especially the young children whom I work with who are attracted to shiny things, but I wouldn't use beautiful to describe the sunburst. I'd use other adjectives, such as tacky and garish. I find the sunburst to be too loud and distracting. The extreme reflectivity of the sunburst pattern is probably responsible for the crystal's very poor readability due to glare. Orient does not state that the sapphire crystal has anti-reflective coating. I don't think the glare is a result of a lack of AR coating, as the crystal is flat. The dial itself is pretty classy. I would say way too classy for the rest of the watch. The applied indexes line up correctly. They're attractive, original, and easy to read. The handset is very nice too. The day-date window is nicely framed, making the day and date very easy to read. I would argue that there's too much crap at the top of the dial. Did Orient really need to squeeze in automatic under the logo? Do they even make quartz watches? The bezel uses an aluminum insert. I wish the sapphire crystal was positioned above the aluminum rather than below, so that the crystal took the brunt of impacts. Aluminum is very easy to scratch and dent. It's very hard to damage a sapphire crystal. The 120 click bezel lines up correctly. The action is excellent. It is nice and crisp and sounds great. You can do a complete rotation in about five turns. The case back is nothing to write home about, but this is not important. The case's integration with the bracelet is not bad. They could have done a better job matching the color. The case of the watch looks uninspired and a little cheesy. It's brushed on the front and very lightly polished on the sides, like the bracelet. Some reviewers have argued for a chamfer on the sides of the case. I argue that this would have made the case look even cheesier than it already does. I think Orient should have brushed the entire case. The Kamusu's loom is pretty good. The watch is readable for at least six hours in complete darkness. The Kamusu's in-house caliber F6922 movement is more accurate than the watch industry's popular entry-level movement, the Seiko NH36. Notice how there's no errors. I don't see that too often. I'll give you a vertical time graph as well. This Kamasu is running well within specification. The Kamasu is the first dive watch that I reviewed that doesn't have any sharp edges. Size for my wrist, which is a little over 7 inches, the watch weighs 163 grams, which is a pretty reasonable weight. Okay, so I just bought this really poorly designed watch from Orient at the full white market value of $280. Do I get anything at all to justify this price other than a crystal that won't scratch because it's sapphire? I've covered the big stuff. How about the little things? Do I get drill lug holes? Nope. Do I get screw pins? Nope. I get push pins, which in all honesty were remarkably easy to work with. Do I get solid end links? What do you think? Of course not. Do I get a milled scissor clasp? Of course not. You get nothing with the Kamasu, with a side order of nada. I only have one extra link after sizing the watch for my wrist, which is slightly over 7 inches. This is pretty sad. I would hope there would have been at least three links left so that people with wide wrists could wear this watch. If you call Orient, I suspect they'll either sell or give you a spare link, but I implore you to avoid this scenario by not buying this watch. The Kamasu is crap. While tragic, the fragile egos that will be crushed when this review is watched probably saves lives.